Okay, this is your quick poll today. We're getting started by solving this equation, negative 4x plus 9 equals 30. Please pause the recording until you have finished this, and then we can come back and check our answer. All right, let's build our flow map. What's happening to x? Thank you for the hand, Trinity. Yes, it's being multiplied by a negative 4. Key thing there. That's probably one of the bigger mistakes. After we multiplied by a negative 4, what happened to x next, Brian? Yep, we add 9 after that. And then after I do all of those things, I end up with all of that being equal to 30. And now it's time to undo. How do I undo adding 9, Chandon? Subtract 9. How do I undo multiplying by a negative 4, Dakota? Divide by a negative 4. When I undo those things, I'll know the value of x. So let's do those solving steps. First thing I need to do is subtract 9. Remember, the reason we're subtracting 9 is to undo the adding 9. So that also gives me a clue as to where I need to be writing that and how I should be showing my work. Right below the add 9, I'm writing subtract 9 because it's going to undo itself. And whatever I do to one side, we do it to the other side. And the whole reason we did that is to make it be gone so it undoes itself. It's zeroed out. And what am I left with? Not just 4x, but negative 4x. Did you catch that? Some of you, yes. Yeah, negative 4x is equal to 30 minus 9. We don't write the 30. We don't write the minus 9. We write what 30 minus 9 is, and that is 21. Okay, we have now subtracted 9 from each side. Next step, we need to divide each side by a negative 4. Divide by a negative 4. Divide by a negative 4. Again, remember, I'm dividing by a negative 4. This is how I'm showing that division. That's this line right here. It's called a paniculum. And I write it right below it because remember, now that I have divided, that part is undone. And so I am left with x all by itself, which is equal to and balanced with. In our calculators, we should figure out what 21 divided by a negative 4 is. And what do you get, Birdie? Negative 5.25. A positive divided by a negative is a negative. So there were a couple of students who entered the positive version. That means you know how to do, you know how to undo, you know these steps, you know these procedures, but you lost track of your negative. Math practice six is attend to precision. Don't lose those negatives. Don't lose them in your calculations. Don't lose them when typing into the calculator. Make sure you know what's happening. Overall, guys, huge, huge improvement on solving equations from previously. So even the small little mistakes like losing a negative, I can handle that. You guys know this process and procedure much better than before. So let's pick up where we left off. Last time we are going to be talking about solving equations. We're going to skip over to the back side, which looks like this. Before we dive right into these ones here on the back, I would like to review these ones right here. Will you please quickly summarize with your groups, how were these two problems here, the 6 times x minus 12 equals negative 36, and the 6 times the group of x minus 12 equals negative 36, how are they similar and different? Talk with your groups first. Talk with your groups. I'm going to pause the recording. Ready, set, go. Half of the room is ready. The other half. Okay. What's the main difference between each of these? Gavin. Exactly right. What he said is the main difference is the parentheses. And the parentheses end up do making a big difference, have a big impact, because the parentheses here tell us it's part of a group and the subtract 12 happen first. Without the parentheses, there are no grouping symbols, so we go straight into the multiplication and we can see that the multiply by 6 is what happened first. And when we do and then undo, you can see what a big impact that has. Without the parentheses, it was x equals negative 4. And with the parentheses, it's x equals 6. So there is a little bit of a difference. Now, I know that we still have this one. I'm not going to focus on this one yet. We're going to save that one for later. What I want you to recognize is this one right here. What's happening? We have a different operation than we've seen before. 
So let's talk about this one together. What is happening to x? Just a few hands. So have a quick discussion at your tables. What's happening to x? Take a look at it. Okay, what's happening to x first? Uh, Stephen, it is being divided. So again, this line right here, that's the viniculum, it means that we're dividing. So we go through that same order of operations thing. Any grouping symbols in this equation? No. Any exponents in here? Yes? No. Any multiplication? M is for multiplication and division. Any multiplication? Yes. Not multiplication. Any division? Yes. And so that's how I know what happened first. X was divided by 7. So yes, we had some multiplication. Now let's move on to the addition and subtraction. A is for addition and subtraction. Do you see any addition or subtraction in here? Yes. So this is going to be so very similar to our other ones, right? It's just now we divided when we created this equation. So we're going to have to undo that a little bit differently. When I do these things in that order, I end up with the result of 3. And now let's undo those things. I undo adding 5. That's not new to subtract 5. But this is new. How do I undo dividing by 7? Luke, we multiply by 7. So we do those things in that order and we figure out what x is equal to. Let's take a look at these solving steps then. This is the only one I'm really going to walk you through and then you're going to have to do the other ones on your own. So make sure you're paying attention here. The solving steps, let's rewrite the problem. x divided by 7 plus 5 is equal to 3. What's the first thing I need to do? Subtract 5. We already built our flow map. We can see exactly what we need to do. So we subtract 5 and whatever I do to one side, we do it to the other side. Remember, I wrote the minus 5 right below the plus 5 because it zeroes out. It's undone. What am I left with? Whatever we're left with, you just bring it right on down. So we have x divided by 7 is what's left over. This is zeroed out, but it's equal to, don't bring down the 3, don't bring down the negative 5, bring down what 3 minus 5 is, birdie. It is negative 2. Okay. Subtracted 5 from each side, done. Next step. This is the reason why we create this flow map so we know what was happening and we know how to undo it and we can see the next thing I need to do. Multiply by 7. Again, look at how I'm writing this. Look at how I'm showing my work. I'm not going to write times 7 below. That doesn't make sense. Okay, I write the minus 5 below. That makes sense that so we're just showing that we had the 5. We take away the 5. I'm going to write this multiply by 7 right next to the divide by 7. Okay, again, showing our work in these ways really helps make things make more sense. Whatever I do to one side, balance it out and do the same thing over here. And again, you might say, oh no, oh no, this looks so scary, I don't know what to do. Remember, the whole reason we chose to multiply by 7 is because it was going to undo dividing by 7, so it's not that it zeroes out, it's that it divides out. Because 7 divided by 7 isn't 0, 7 divided by 7 is 1. So really, truly, if I do 7 divided by 7, I'm left with 1x. Well, guess what? 1x is the same as saying x. We're just lazy, right? I have one dog. I don't normally say I have one dog. I say I have a dog, and it's the same thing here. 1x is the same as x, okay? But 7 divided by 7 doesn't 0. It does divide out to 1. And what am I left with on the other side? What is it equal to and balanced with, Brian? You got it, negative 14. Okay, easy peasy, right? Let's, let's practice. Let's check our answer. Let's go through that process. X is supposed to be negative 14. So if X is negative 14, and I take negative 14 and I divide it by 7, what do I get? We have calculators, so use it if you need to. Negative 14 divided by 7 is, go ahead, Trinity. It is negative 2. And now, what happens if I take that negative 2 and I add 5? What do I get? Jackson? Oh, just like I was supposed to then, right? So yeah, we checked our answer and it worked out. So use that flow map to figure out what happened to x. Figure out how to undo what happened and then use it again to check your answer. And it works out almost every single time. And if it doesn't, it's because you made a mistake somewhere. So we go back and do it again. The next two. Will you take a look at this equation? and the one right below it. Similarities, differences. 
What do you see? Talk with your groups. Talk with your groups. I don't want to see the hands yet. Talk with your groups. Okay, and voice is off. Voice is off. Thank you. Do you see, first of all, do you see some similarities? Yeah. They both have that it's equal to negative 4. They both are set up backwards, right? So all the other ones, we've had all the stuff happening, and then it's equal to 3. Uh, do we need to be concerned that it's backwards? No. So eyes on me for a second. Remember, we have talked about this a little bit in the past. It's a balanced scale. That's what an equation is, balanced scale, right? So let's say I've got my x's. Well, let's see. You're looking at me this way. So here's my x's, and here's what it's equal to on the other side. Is it really any different if you look at me in reverse order? I'm still a balanced scale, right? So if you don't like the way you look, then just go to the other side. So yes, you can switch it, but also why go through all that extra work when it means the exact same thing, right? So we have that they're both equal to negative 4. Yes. We have Q. We have a minus 19. We have divided by 8. So how are they different then? If they have all of those same types of things, how are they different? Zachary? You're exactly right. We have a longer line here. Why do we have a longer line here? What is that longer line doing? Birdie. Yep. Okay, not too bad. Yes, Q is being subtracted by 19. So why is this longer line here? This longer line is a grouping symbol. And it's a grouping symbol that we don't recognize as a grouping symbol all the time. We usually look for parentheses, but do you notice exactly as Bertie said, do you see how it's telling us Q minus 19? It's grouping that together. That is a grouping symbol. Is it grouping anything together up here? No. So think about how that's going to change. I want you guys to build your flow maps. Give it a try first. Build your flow maps first, and then we'll talk about them. Don't try and solve yet, okay? I just want you to work with your groups, build your flow maps, and see how they're similar and different. With your groups, ready, set, go. And pausing the recording. Okay. What is happening to not X, but Q this time? What's happening to Q right here? Gabe. This one. And then after divided by 8, then what? Gabe still? Very good. Okay. And when I do those things in that order, it's equal to negative 4. It's okay that we're going in reverse order, right? Like, it's no different than looking at the scale that way. So just making sure we make that connection. I'm going to undo subtracting 19 by adding 19. And I'm going to undo dividing by 8 by multiplying by 8. Before we solve, let's compare and contrast that then to what's happening here. Remember, we're going through that order of operations. And do you see any grouping symbols? Yes. So I hope that you caught on that this is going to be different. What's happening to Q first? Katie. Not quite. So when I'm taking a look at this equation here. We're not to the solving steps or anything. I'm saying what happened to Q first and we go through, are there any grouping symbols? Yes, this line is a grouping symbol. And what is it grouping together? The Q and the minus 19. So what happened to Q first is we subtracted 19. Do you see that? Oh, I see some erasers. Some students are having to redo. That's okay. We're learning right now so that we can be perfect at it later. It's okay to make mistakes now. Let's just learn from them. After we subtract 9, because that's grouped together, so we subtracted, not 9, sorry, we subtracted 19, then what happened to Q next, Birdie? Then we divided by 8. And when I do those things in that order, I have that it's equal to negative 4. Sorry, I skipped. We did G, no E for exponents. Was there multiplication or division? Yeah, okay. And was there addition or subtraction? Yes, but that addition or subtraction was handled with the grouping symbol. So that's why we did that first. Let's undo dividing by 8. How do I undo dividing by 8? 
we multiply by 8. How do I undo subtracting 19? We add 19. And when I undo all of those things in the right order, I'll know what Q is equal to. Do our flow maps look similar? Yeah. Do we have divide by 8 and subtract 19 in each? Yes. Are they in the exact same order? No. And they shouldn't be because the equations were built differently. So let's solve the first one together. Rewriting it so that we can show our solving steps. Negative 4 is equal to Q divided by 8 minus 19. And I will not use Q as a variable in the future. I'll try and avoid that. <clears throat> but in the meantime, we're going to solve it. Here's my solving steps. What's the first thing I should be doing? Adding 19. Where am I going to put adding 19? Right below the minus 19. Because remember, the whole point of it is that it's undoing this minus 19. Balance it. Do the same thing to the other side. So I'm going to come around to the other side of the equal sign, which is all the way over here, and add 19. <clears throat> Remember how this zeroes out? So I am left with, yes, birdie. The truth is you can put it wherever you want. I just like dragging everything straight down. So what do I have over here on the left-hand side? I have negative 4 plus 19, and negative 4 plus 19 is? Zachary? Double check. Type it in your calculator. Negative 4 plus 19. What'd you get? I did not hear 15. I'm sorry. I misheard some. I heard something completely different. I'm sorry. Yes, 15. <coughs> We bring down the equal sign, just bring everything straight down. And what do we have over here on the right-hand side? Remember how that's zeroed out? So what do I have? Q divided by 8. Does that answer that question, Bertie? Just bring it straight down. Wherever it was, bring it straight down. And now, I have now successfully added 19 to each side and simplified, so what is my next step? Follow that flow map. It says we multiply by 8. Again, pay attention to where I'm putting that multiply by 8. Just putting it off to the side so that I can show how it's going to multiply out. Whatever I do to one side, we do it to the other side. Remember that multiplies out, so I'm left with what? Bring it straight down. I'm left with just Q all by itself, and it's equal to and balanced with. On the other side, I have 8 times 15. Go ahead, Gabe. 120. So Q is equal to 120. Let's double check. Is Q really equal to 120? Let's go back through our flow map. 120 divided by 8. 120 divided by 8. What did you get, Trinity? Good. And 15. Continuing on. Taking that 15, subtracting 19. 15 subtract 19. What do you get? Steven? Negative 4. Just like the flow map said we would. So check it all worked out. Now, let's follow the flow map down here, which is different. The first step that I'm going to take is multiplying by 8. So let's rewrite that problem. Negative 4 is equal to Q minus 19, all divided by 8. Solving steps. What is that first solving step? Multiply by 8. Whatever I do to one side. I do it to the other side. So again, remember, I like to write that multiply by 8 off to the side because that multiplies out. On the left-hand side, I have 8 times negative 4, Dakota. It's okay, What were you? whatever you were going to comment on. Okay, go ahead. Yes, 8 times negative 4 is negative 32, and it's equal to and balanced with on the other side. Remember, that all multiplied out. So what am I left with? Go ahead, Gabe. Mm -hmm. Again, as to Bertie's question earlier, just bring everything straight on down. We answer this, put it right below. Bring down the equal sign, straight down. What are we left with? Just the Q minus 19, bring it straight down. Okay, we have now multiplied each side by 8 and simplified, and now our next step, just follow that flow map. Next thing to do, add 19. Where do I put it? right below it. And whatever I do to one side, I do it to the other side. Use those calculators. This is going to zero out, but I have negative 32 plus 19. Chandon. 
negative 13. Negative 13 is equal to, remember how that zeroed out, so all I'm left with is Q. So in other words, negative 13 equals Q, or Q equals negative 13. Let's double check that answer. Go back through the flow map. Negative 13 minus 19. Use your calculator. Negative 13 minus 19. Stephen? Good. Negative 32. And negative 32 divided by 8. What do you get, Jackson? Ooh, yeah, maybe double check that. Negative 32 divided by 8. What did you get, Stephen? Yeah, negative 4. Is that what you're supposed to get? Yeah, it checks out. Again, let's compare. Remember how very similar those equations looked? It was just that grouping symbol being stretched out or not stretched out. Does it make a difference? Absolutely. Q equals 120 or... Q equals negative 13. So it absolutely makes a big, huge difference. All right. I think you guys are pretty professional at this. Remember, the last homework assignment that I assigned to you was to complete these problems. I'm not going to check it today, which means if you are a slacker, you have an extra day. So you can still get those ones done. I'm now also going to assign this one. But will you take a look at the time? Do you have a lot of time in class? So does it really have to become homework? No, it doesn't. So that's what your homework is. It is now time to go back to the front to the one that we skipped. Yes, Gabe. This one right here? Okay, voice is off. Gabe has a question. It's a question that maybe you guys have as well. Let's listen to it. It's all how it's built. So look at how it's built. We go, every time we're trying to figure out how it's built, we're going through the order of operations to figure out how it's built. To answer that, Gabe, I'm going to come back over here to this one. Were there grouping symbols here? Yeah. So what happened first? What happened first is whatever was in those grouping symbols. So what happened first? We subtracted 12. After we subtracted 12 with the grouping symbols, were there any exponents? No. Was there any multiplication? Yeah, and that's what happened next, right? So because those grouping symbols, we skipped to the addition or subtraction because the grouping symbols were there saying we did that first. So subtract 12, then we multiply by 6, which means what do we have to undo first? That multiply by 6, right? If Going back to last year's analogy, if this is the sock and this is the shoe, what do you have to take off first? You have to take off the shoe. The shoe has to come off before we can finally make it to taking the sock off. Now, compare this one to this one over here. Going through that same order of operations, are there grouping symbols? Yeah, there are grouping symbols. Remember, this dividing line is grouping that Q and minus 19 together. In a way, it's like there are some parentheses here saying this happened first. And because that happened first, we're not just dividing the 8, or Q by 8, we're dividing Q minus 19 by 8. That is what happened first. The grouping symbols tell me. So this is my sock on. After we put our sock on, then what happened next? Now we divide by 8. That's my shoe on. Now it's time to take everything off. What do we have to take off first? We have to take off the shoe. How do I take off the shoe? We multiply by 8 to undo the dividing by 8. Now once the shoe is off, that's when I can finally take the sock off and add the 19. Does that help, Gabe? It all is in how it's built, which is why it's so important, first of all, that you go through the order of operations every time. Are there grouping symbols? And don't just look for parentheses. Look for all types of grouping symbols, like a really long, large dividing line that's grouping things together. Okay, that's a really good question. Any other questions? Okay, and back to this one. Are you ready for a challenge? Okay, this is one 
that is going to be a challenge for you right now, but eventually I want you to be able to see this and not have any issues with it. When we're building this flow map, we have to be really careful because you might say that W is first being multiplied by three, which is not true. I want you to take a look at this subtraction right here. You might remember me telling you in years past that we changed subtraction to adding a we can't just change it to addition. Is taking away $3 the same as adding $3? No. So we can't just change it to addition just because I feel like it. When we see subtraction, we change it to... Wow. Yes, Luke? Yes, but again, you, you're missing the point. You can't just change this just to addition because is this the same as the original problem? No. Again, tying it into that analogy, is spending $3 the same as earning $3? I wish. I wish every time I spent money it worked the same as me just randomly getting money, but it doesn't work that way. Okay, good thing we're reviewing, because yikes. Adding a negative. Oh, do you remember that now? Okay, eyes on the screen, because that's super important. You have to be able to do that. We change subtraction to adding a negative because adding a negative is the same as subtracting. When I rewrite it that way, changing subtraction to adding a negative, what's happening to W? Is it being multiplied by three anymore? It's being multiplied by negative three. Now, after we multiply by negative three, then what's happening? Then we add six. We're not subtracting. Is that a subtraction sign? Nope, we add six. When I do those things in that order, it is equal to a negative 27. So I want you to be careful about that subtraction when we're subtracting the variable, because we're not just multiplying by three, it ends up being that we're multiplying by a negative three. And how am I going to undo adding 6? We subtract 6. And how am I going to undo multiplying by a negative 3? We divide by a negative 3. Let's go through these solving steps. Let's even pretend like maybe I didn't catch that it was a multiplied by a negative 3. I want to show you how you can still be successful with math practice 6 attending to precision even if you didn't catch some of those things. First thing I need to do is subtract 6. Okay, because I've got six things here, taking them away to zero it out, balance it, do the same thing to the other side. That's going to zero. Negative 27 minus 6. What's negative 27 minus 6? Trinity? Okay, what's your question first? That's fine. Yeah, if you want to put parentheses around a negative, that's always acceptable. I'm lazy and so I don't, but you are welcome to. Birdie? It is negative 33. Now look at this. This is where things get to be a little bit different. Do you see how it says minus 3w? So what is left over? Is it just 3w left over? No, it's minus 3w, or in other words, negative 3w. So even if you don't take the time to build the flow map, you would still hopefully be able to catch it as long as you bring everything else down. And now how do you undo multiplying by a negative 3? We have it in our flow map. We would divide by a negative 3. Balance it to the same thing to the other side. And remember, negative 3 divided by negative 3 divides out to 1. So I am left with W. And the left-hand side, negative 33, divided by negative 3. Thank you, Zachary. 11. So W is equal to 11. All right, anything on this worksheet that is not yet finished, that is homework. There is a little bit of time before it's cleanup time, so focus on finishing up these problems. Don't freak out, they're just decimals. It's the same process. It's just now we're dealing with decimals instead of whole numbers and whole integers. Uh, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching.